To the weekly extra point live by my host Mo Khan with me as always for the Div D action and in lieu of the Women's World Cup, the Hope Solo of the show, Jam Kulethis. You're really upset because I called you Manny Mahotra last week. No, this, this no. is it, right? This is this is if my payback. The, uh, I called Mo in the Div C Weppel Manny Mahotra, and apparently he got offended because Manny Mahotra yeah. is too light skinned to be compared to Mo, no, even no, though I got called Dan Boyle. You see, if you watch the Div C action, uh, I call uh, JP Messing the Ami Wamba. Oh, okay. One back, as people like to say, on the show. So it's too bad we don't have Darren this week. That would be fun. Uh, Darren, I would probably, I don't know what I would name him. All right, let's break down the action. Dragons. Dragons, big win over the Incredibles, 33 to 26. Simone Dagenet, Andrew Funamato, identical TDs to INTs, four TDs to one INT. Jacob Pearson, three touchdowns. You figure with one guy getting three touchdowns, you would win nine times out of ten. But on the tenth time, the Dragons come up big with a huge win over the Incredibles to put them on top of the league standings. Your thoughts on this football game? Well, I mean, absolutely. You're saying that a guy will go out with three touchdowns, but at the same time, you have to look at what the other receivers on the field are doing. If it's only Peterson carrying this load on his back, of course, by the, the, the Dragons are going to key into this, and uh, they're going to make it sway into their favor, and that's what they've done. The Dragons have float, floated under the radar the whole season, and now they're really starting to make some noise because they're, they're at the top of their conference right now, and they're a strong team. I mean, th there's no choice about it. They play smart football, Simon Dagenet. Right now, in Division D, he's the king of the long pass, and teams are starting to take notice. I think that, the, uh, especially Funimoto's performance wasn't bad, it's just that I, I feel like he should have spread the ball a little bit more and kept the Dragons guessing. Everyone knows what a solid player Jacob Peterson is, so you have to try and incorporate him into the offense without making it too blatant. All right, looking at what could happen now. For, we'll talk more about these two teams a bit later on here, but looking at the Flying Comics now. And they edge the Wild Kittens, 29-24. Frank Granier, four TDs, two INTs. And you figure with your quarterback, Hyman Luang. Do I pronounce that properly? Yeah, that's fine. He had four touchdowns, no INTs. Zero. Which, which normally would dictate nine times out of ten a football victory. But in this case, you guys get edged out by the... Flying comics and their jokes. Yeah, so in this one time out of ten, we've discussed this before. What the biggest problem that the Wild Kittens have is that they cannot convert on those third and fourth downs, and they they're, they find themselves often forced to punt. It's really those clutch situations that are getting the balls are getting dropped, or even in one case, I was playing center as our center wasn't there, and I caused a safety by snapping the ball over long set into our own end zone, and that was a turnover on downs. And we, we lost two points. And you know what? Ultimately, that's, that's what made a difference in this football game. Grenier, um, he had Sebastian Reverie back in the lineup for him, who had a monster game. But Grenier was spreading the ball efficiently. He wasn't uh, necessarily throwing it downfield a lot, but he would find his receivers who would get a lot of yards after reception, which was really, really key for the, uh, the Flying Comics at this point. And they were just the better team at that point. All right, looking at the Average Joes and their big win over the clockwork, shocking clockwork, 26 to 12, Tom Nicotopoulos, my friend. Say that 10 times. Tom Nicotopoulos? Three Tom TDs. Tom one Nicotopoulos? I and D. Marvin Godin had one touchdown grab as himself. Uh, in fact, the Average Joes, at least five players caught one ball, if not more, in this football game. A big shock to see clockwork uh, Go reversing on the clock as Avs Joe's won a big football game. Time stopped. Time did stop. I mean, you're, you're also, I mean, you're talking about uh, 
Marvin, but we, they also clock, uh, clockwork had to go up against Chris Smith, who uh, who last played for the Briscoe Highhawks in Div C, who uh, left the game with a touchdown and a pick six. I mean, he's a former Vanier player. He's a very very strong football player. Bringing him into the lineup for the average Joes was was a really really good move. He's not here for that long, as he's uh, he's back in in Toronto before long. But just to have him here, just to play with a few of his old teammates, I mean, it, it it's great to see him on the field again. I think that uh, Marco Maciotra needs needs to just take something away from this. They were undefeated. They can't let this get into their heads now because it's going to mean more losses unless they adapt from this into the future. The average Joes seem to be playing up to, up to their, uh, their opposition. It seems that the stronger the team they face is, the, uh, the more likely they are to come into that win category. So I think this is good come playoff time because they're just going to sneak into the playoffs and they're probably going to go up against the one or the two seed. And considering how they play against their opposition, this might be even better news for them than to play against the five or the six seed team. All right, well, looking at what could happen down the road for, for the average Joes, though, uh, just a quick yes or no here. Do you think that they are a team that can be a dark horse in this playoffs, yes or no? Yes. Um, go just ahead. a quick yes or no? Yeah, or, quick, okay. quick, go ahead. So, yes, I think they can be a dark horse I in, in this division. In this league as a whole, we see teams that float under the radar and make a jump in the playoffs. It happened in almost every division last year, except for Division 2, where the two one seeds faced off. But in every other division, you didn't see a one seed in the playoffs in the finals. There were, there were no one seeds left. So it's really, it, it doesn't matter where you finish in the regular season, as long as you guarantee yourself that playoff spot. Because once you're in the playoffs, it's a brand new season and everything can happen. And you should not be looking lightly on your opponents. It doesn't matter who they are. You go into every game seriously. and I think that, that will be the difference. The team that approaches it with, puts a lot of stock into the, each game is the team that's going to make it to the championship. All right, best team in Div D. Could it be the Vikings, the best team? They have the winners of five out of the last six games in, in the last few, uh, last, I guess, middle chunk of the season here, part of me. But are the Vikings the best team in Div D? I mean, you see that they're getting it done, but they're not really up to par with the stronger teams. I mean, they have inconsistent numbers. Some weeks they'll go, they'll be fantastic. Some weeks they'll only squeak by, like this week against the Tyrants. It was a, it was a win that just kind of squeaked by. Uh, you saw that they almost lost it because of a, a penalty uh, during a touchdown that was called back on a pass interference call. But that being said, Graham Carr is one of the bigger quarterbacks in this division. He's, he's a strong quarterback. He's able to find his receivers downfield, and I think that he's a real, real asset for this team to have. So yes, I think they're up there with the elite teams in Division D, but they're not necessarily the best as of yet. All right, so looking at some conference battles. We'll go with Conference A. The top five seeds separated by a mere four points from first to fifth here. Dragons, Vikings at six and two. We have the Incredibles locked down at five and three. Tyrus at four and four. Looking at this right now, top five separated by four points. As I mentioned before, these five teams in order that they are in right now. Uh, is it safe to say we'll see a shuffle amongst those five teams where we might see maybe tyrants with an outside chance to maybe move up to the top three, if not first place for that matter, or some other team moving down? Well, I mean. I don't think that the Dragons are going to move from first place. I think they've pretty much solidified this, especially with the last two games they have in the season. Their last game, they're going to be playing the Wild Kittens, who are 1-9, and nine, so it's safe to say they're going to leave that with a win as well. That being said, some of the 2-3 and three seeds, you're talking about Lockdown, who had their uh, first loss in a little while this week. I think that these, these are so close right now that it's too early to say where those are going to be finishing, but aside from the first place, everything else is still up for grabs, and I think that it's going to be a fun, fun division to watch. Uh, just a little pronostication here: what will be the final record for the first place team in this division? If it's maybe the Dragons at six and two, they can maximize and go eight and two. Do you think that will be the final record for the first place team? Yeah, absolutely. Eight, eight and two sounds like a really, really respectable number. Even seven and three, because of the uh, the games that the Dragons have won, they will still edge out and get that first place. But I think that seven and three, eight and two, it's obviously going to happen for them. But I would go with eight and two. Eight and two would be a safe bet to say for the Dragons. I mean, right now they are red hot. All right, the Cubs beat top five again, separated by a mere four points. We have Clockwork at seven to one, Carnage, Maximum Carnage, that is Boozers at six and two, and we have Efra at five two and one, and Chile F F C. Chile con carne. Yeah, F C C at five and three. Uh, looking at this, a two-game separation from first to fifth here. Do we see a little bit of a shuffle in the ranks? 
I mean, as we were saying before, there seems to be a bit of a divide in this division. You have the really, really elite teams, and then you have the average teams. So I think that it's a lot more difficult, especially in B, with the powerhouse that is clockwork, for the other teams to try and move up. Because we can all but assume that the clock, uh, clockwork are not going to lose another game. So they're probably going to finish 9-1 and one as predicted. And I think that after that, you have the other teams. You've got here uh, Carnage and the Boozers. I think that Carnage are going to get second place right now. I think that they're a st strong, strong team. They had a huge win against Lockdown this week. And I think that that's really going to boost their morale, even though they didn't have Jeff Moscato or I'm in Society, who are their two big safeties at the moment. So, I mean, if they were able to do it without that, they're really a team that's relying on playing together. And I think that they're going to be dangerous and they're going to be a team to watch at this point. So I see that Clockwork are definitely going to finish first. But I think that Maximum Carnage are going to make that jump and take second place. All right, so let's look at the stocks. Buy or sell, our weekly uh, stock report here, where we buy or sell stocks or hold on stocks for that matter here. Uh, some teams here, Incredibles, Tyrants, uh, to name here, whether it's Dragons, whether it's the Vikings, uh, Average Joes maybe. Uh, who do you buy, who do you sell, or who do you hold on? Well, I guess we're talking about Dark Horse teams if we're looking to buy something to make, make some profit, I would say buy in the average Joes just because they, they would probably have a low stock to begin with just because they only have two wins, but their two wins are strong, strong, strong wins, especially against clockwork. So this may be a preview towards the future. I mean, stocks shouldn't be that expensive, would you say? So I'd no. say I would, buy it, I would buy in average Joes. I'm going to keep, definitely I'm going to keep in the Dragons. Clockwork, you're gonna go, it goes without saying that you're going to have some stock in them. But I guess if there's a team that you're going to sell in at this point, at this moment, seeing how shaky they played against Maximum Carnage, who had a limited roster, I would sell right now in lockdown, but not really all that much at this moment. So I think right now there's going to be a lot of holding because we made smart decisions in the past. So I think that we should hold on to what we have at this moment. All right. Wise words from Jim Clathers, the infamous Robert Capanis saying from years ago. Picks. Let's go with our three picks of the week here. We got three key games here. We'll go with the first game, Vikings Flying Comics. Uh, I think that the Vikings, especially with a roster as big as they have, and especially a roster as big as they are in size, I think they're going to outmuscle the funny men. I think that Frank Grenny, as smart a quarterback as he is, he's going to be frustrated by the vivacity of the uh, of the Vikings. They're a very, very vocal team. As we've said before, they're very physical. And I think that they're going to be a little bit too much for the Flying Comics to handle. And the Flying Comics are going to be sent packing. I think that the Vikings are going to win this one not convincingly, but by two point, uh, by a sc two scores. Okay, then let's look at Clockwork Lafre. I think that Mathieu Damon has been playing really, really good these past few weeks. But Clockwork are going to be leaving this week's game frustrated after losing to a team like, on paper, the average Joes, who, I mean, you'd look and you say, look, they don't have that many wins. We should have won this convincingly. So I think that um, Kirouac and his boys are going to come into this game very angry and ready to win. And I think that it's going to be a score that's going to be definitely Clockwork. And unfortunately for Lafka, it's going to be an example game for them. All right, finally, replacements, punch pad. This is a de facto elimination game. Whoever will lose this game will essentially have the upper hand on that last playoff spot. So who do you think will win this football game? I think at this moment, you've got a really, really good matchup. You've got uh, Punch Panda, who aren't necessarily a bad team. It's just that they have a lot of trouble with the rules and with their playbook. They're, they're very, very athletic. And I think that on the flip side, you have a team with more experience, like the replacements, who just can't get it going. They're having some quarterback consistency issues. They had Kevin Goatee come and fill in for Moa Zab, who's not able to play. However, in past few weeks, even though he's not playoff eligible, they've ha uh, the replacements have had Akeem Hoyt Charles come into the mix. Akeem on defense uh, as an interception machine paired with Ryan Aridi, who's arguably one of the better uh, quarterback rushers in this division. I think that the replacements are going to take this one. All right, then here we go. As we get closer and closer to the playoffs, we're only two weeks away from the season being completed. Then on to the playoffs, and then the road show in Brossard, Quebec. We'll be uh, suited up. Uh, we'll figure out the suits. I don't know what the uh, attire is for that, uh, but we'll figure it out in okay. time. And without further ado, the magic words, please. From all of us at the Weekly Extra Point Live. Good night, Brazil. Women's World Cup. Women's World Cup. Yes, yes. Good game. Watch me not stop, though.